Hello, folks. Welcome to the Marshmallow Meadow, the land of milk and crackers. Action! Hello out there to all our friends in radio. We're all here gathered round the studio grand. And the boys in the band will go. And we'll play and sing for you. Cowboy Jack Clement. You know, Jack Clement was with me at Sun Records from the very beginning. He was an engineer, he was a record producer, a musician, a singer, a songwriter. Sun Records, the very birthplace of rock and roll. At the small studio in Memphis, Tennessee, renegade producer Sam Phillips discovered Elvis Presley. Phillips' right-hand man was Jack Clement. And it was from Phillips that Clement learned the importance of spontaneity and of feel over form. Well, together they shocked the world with their profound belief in the power of the individual. I worked for Sam Phillips for about three years, close to three years, before he fired me. And uh, it was a great experience, probably the most profound experience of my life. Jack went to school with Sam. You could see the respect Jack had for Sam. Like any great relationship, there was some love, hate, like families. Sam Phillips, he reminded me of a part carnival guy. Perfect guy for Jack. Since Jack would like to make a circus out of life. <laughs> And Sam was never trying to compete with Nashville. He was always looking for some country music that was a little rawer and different. I think that's the difference. It's a slickness factor. And there's a difference between being smooth and being slick. Since I was an Arthur Murray dance instructor, before I was a rock and roll producer, I was pretty smooth, you know. That's why I went to Memphis to to see Sam Phillips, and I run into Jack Clement. <laughs> when Jerry Lee Lewis came in to uh, audition, he was singing George Jones song. He wasn't singing rock and roll, but I had to tell him that uh, country music's not happening right now. You need to learn some rock and roll. So he went home, came back about a month later. He had a version of "You're the Only Star in My Blue Heaven," which knocked me out. It's the old Gene Autry song, which was the waltz. You're the only star in my blue heaven. Well, Jerry Lee went, bump, bump, bump. You're the only star in my blue heaven. <laughs> Jack and Jerry Lee were really good friends when they were young. But as far as the Memphis crowd goes, I think that Jack and, and Johnny they came out with the best friendship. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. <laughs> What's that name again? Uh, jo uh, Johnny Cash. Hello. Hey, wait a minute. No, there's an alternate version. Ready? Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. <laughs> Turn in from the left or right. Yes. <laughs> Sam Phillips was producing me, of course, on Sun Records back in the 50s. And about, long about 57, he turned the sessions over to Jack Clement to produce. Jack also wrote... Ballad of a Teenage Queen, Guess Things Happen That Way, Some Mighty Goods. And uh, he wrote also, You Dirty Old Egg Sucking Dog. <laughs> Probably in Cowboys country, Company, John Cash has pulled more foolishness, you know, with, around the cowboy than he has the rest of his life put together, I suspect. Like <laughs> 
just snapped him up like rolling blinds and told me things that I did. Yeah, face another day and night of good ideas and complications. Got a thankful that I didn't open another bottle of inspiration. We just got on, and then we stayed in touch when he left son. I love that man. I remember one night, uh, must have been 12, 15 years ago, he and I both were inducted in the Songwriters Hall of Fame here in Nashville. And uh, I think we should do somebody else's song, don't you? Instead of ours. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know how many people ever knew there were words to steal guitar rag, but I just happen to know all of them. Careful driver, uh, but I'm a firm driver. Firm or confirm? I'm a firm driver. When I make a move, it's a firm move. <laughs> ain't that pretty? That's all I'm gonna say. Ain't that pretty? Cause I don't know much else about this. Yeah, I know all about this contraction. Here we go. There's a tree. Your own personal gratitude. There's another tree. Flowers, wildflowers. Marijuana. <laughs> I've been running around, seen many a town. So maybe you find I'm the kind of guy that brags. But listen to me and see if you. Don't agree, no melody rolls like that old steel guitar rag. And when they slide that thing along the string, it sounds a doggone heavenly. You hear the angels sing, and when you start your beat, your heart will beat. I never got to have a smoke with AP before. He died in 1960, and I could never got to know him. Not really. Never got to have a smoke with him. Makes you cry right in your beer. But if you want a tune that's bound to drive away your tear, make happy that soul with that old steel guitar right there, Jack. Kilty Larkin said that pigs can see the wind. <laughs> you see pigs sitting out in the wind, in the pig style, and they'll go, they'll go. One of our cars. <laughs> I've had it's easy to get in and out of. Oh, uh, now that is very nice. <laughs> oh, you're beautiful. See, that doesn't look good. I can understand that. Yeah, that's. You do it just backwards from getting in. Now I'm beautiful. beautiful. That Isn't that great? Incredible. Isn't that great? It's bound to drive away your tears, make happy your soul with that old steel guitar right. Hello. How are you? You like my food? Thank you.
Jack and, and Johnny, you know, they were, they're two that really remained friends from the 50s, from the Sun thing, and always worked together ever since the 50s. I mean, through the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and right up until the last couple of sessions, Jack was playing guitar with John. But when he actually passed, it was a jolt, but it wasn't really a surprise. I get this call at five o'clock morning. I knew what would what what had happened, so. But I broke up a little bit. I think right now Jack's feeling a little bit mortal, you know, because Sam dying, Johnny dying. These are all people that he's known all of his life. I started writing a book one time, probably never finished it, but I got a couple of excerpts from it I'd like to, like to read. Sam fired me one day, <laughs> but nothing changed. It wasn't long before I figured out I didn't want to lose touch with Sam. I felt a need for his musical ingredient. It was always profound even when it was full of shit. Whatever it was, it was strange, surprising, and unique. A voice I'd always wanted to hear, whether I liked it or not. I could always count on Sam to be Sam. Forty-some-odd years later, nothing has changed. Sam still calls me sometime in the middle of the night, preaching to me for an hour or more. Non-stop, no bathroom breaks. A few words in edgewise. I love it. Sam loves the fact that I let him do it. I decided to do it to him one time a few years ago. <laughs> I did it and he let me. <laughs> and I still remember his unlisted number from around 1958. I think Sam misses not having me around the fire. I know the feeling. Well, they have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. See you anon. I don't like it, but I guess things happen that way. Padu, padu. Pa <laughs>